Hey guys, Jen Green here um, from Property House. Wanted to join you today. Um, actually, it's a, quite a lovely day outside. It just cleared up by me. Um, and I was outside with my kids biking for a little bit. Um, wanted to talk about um, some more personal stuff today because as you know, it's been three weeks since, or a little over three weeks now since we've all kind of been at home. And, you know, there's been a lot of adjustments that we've had to make, myself included, not only in my life, um, but in our business that we do. Um, and I just, I wanted to talk about some of the things that I've done that I feel like have made me feel somewhat normal, you know, in this new normal that we have right now. Um, and I know I said it's three easy steps and and it, it is. Um, for me, It's it's been that way because I think, you know, when we're, 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 and I don't want to say stuck because we're fortunate enough to, you know, to have a roof over our heads and, and, you know, have food to eat and things like that. And I feel very grateful for that. Um, so, you know, and my husband and I run more or less run our, our business out of our home, um, you know, which is real estate investing with property house that I just wanted to take some time, um, you know, to talk about those things because, it, 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 you know, more or less kind of happened overnight and it, you know, it is a tough adjustment. And so um, I, I also have to say, I, I have wonderful coaches in my life, business coaches, real estate coaches um, that, that to be honest, have really gotten me through this quite a bit. And for those of you that are in business for yourself or in any kind of business, you know, whatsoever, I think it is really important to have a coach for that. Um, and I've just found that to be extremely beneficial and helpful through this time, because like I said, a lot of it happened overnight and it was kind of like, gosh, what am I going to do? Um, I was actually in St. Louis when some of the lockdown stuff or just, you know, stay at home stuff kind of started happening, um, you know, three, four weeks ago. Um, I was there actually for a business vision seminar in St. Louis and the flight that I had back was supposed to be like a total full flight and it ended up being 48 people on this like 50 passenger airplane going back to Minneapolis. So, um, and that's also when the feds announced that the, um, they were cutting the rates down to, you know, zero to a half a percent. And so it was, you know, it was, it was a changing time. And then, you know, when I came home, it was all of a sudden like, okay, you can't leave your house. Um, so, to, to start off, um, I think one of the biggest things we have to think about is what does this mean for me personally and what does this mean for my business? And so those are some of the things I take into account. My husband and I um, have really made it a priority to make time for each other. Um, and also, I think if you're, you know, if you're not with a partner, um, you know, you are alone. And so thinking about reaching out to friends or family, you know, if you have the ability to over the phone or computer is always something that's extremely important. Um, you know, the first thing just when I, you know, for life and business, I think it's important to think strategically, not only about your life, but about your business. This is something that one of my coaches, JT Fox told me about, um, is really planning your day based on that strategic thinking. Um, and so not only for setting up your business for success, but setting up, you know, how your day is going to go and setting up your partnership, you know, with your partner, also with your children, if you have them, these are some things I think that are really, really important. And, you know, not having the, the time and distance for me personally, is tough. I'm somebody who, you know, re-energizes by being alone or being with a few people, um, my husband, on the other hand, is a total extrovert and loves being around people all the time. And so really kind of functioning on that level and putting, you know, making sure that I have time to myself and that also Dan does have time too. And, you know, that he has some time to be online with some of his friends, whether it's like a virtual, you know, happy hour or just even spending time that way is important for him as well. So with that being said, I think the most important hi Lori. the most important thing um i think that we can really do is what's called block scheduling um and what that is i'm gonna oh it's not letting me do that shoot okay so i thought it was gonna let me do that but it won't but i was gonna share my screen um for my block schedule that i have so i more or less 
have scheduled out my entire day in blocks of either a half hour or an hour. And so what that looks like is, and I'll be completely honest, I'm, I am not an early morning person, um, but I have changed and adjusted based upon you know what my family needs and what our business needs. And so I have been getting up at five o'clock in the morning, um, which I'm, I'm gonna be honest, is not something I particularly enjoy, but for me, like over the last few weeks, I was noticing I was really stressing out. I was struggling with getting things done. I had my temperature kind of shortened. And so I started doing the 5 a.m. wake up, not only because it helped me get certain things done in the morning that I needed to do. And then I could focus more on my family. It also allowed me a little bit more time alone. Um, and then also to just really kind of think strategically about how I was going to, you know, either run that day for my family or run and run my business strategically. So what I do, I wake up at five or a little bit before that I come downstairs um, and I sit at my home office and really from five to five thirty. Um, it's really about that strategic thinking. So um, I look through the numbers of our business, um, making sure our weekly metrics make sense and really kind of start making those small tweaks there um, and looking at what our marketing looks like. Because, you know, that's the other piece that's changed is, is marketing right now. Um, you know, we're not marketing to sell at the moment. We're marketing for needs. And that's something, again, that JT said, and I think that's really, really important because this isn't a time for selling to folks, right? This is a time for asking what we can do to help, whether it's nonprofits, whether it's your business, it's your clients, your repeat clients, other folks that are out there. You saw me the other day talking about the iBuyer back out. That's something that's really going to have a need for folks in the future. If they had their purchase agreement pulled, and they're per, you know, perhaps going to buy another property, I mean, that's a really scary place for people to be. And that's a need that's going to be fulfilled, especially by real estate investors moving forward, those that are still able to do it, it's going to be a need that these folks require. And so we need to be here to help them. And so again, that strategic thinking about the needs that folks are going to have, you have to let people know that you're out here and that you're here to help. And so, not only like reviewing those numbers and looking at what your marketing says, but then also amending perhaps what it says in those marketing letters and those messaging, because that messaging is going to help position you with those folks to let them know that you're there to help them if something should come up. Because, you know, nobody really knows what's going to happen. And that's, I think, the most, you know, not necessarily frightening, but uncertain piece about this time. People don't operate well you know, with um, people don't operate well when they're uncertain, right? People do well when there's certainty. And so creating that certainty for folks is going to be extremely important um, in, you know, what we see moving forward. The other thing is I've also really thought strategically about new partnerships, right? Perhaps other investors that I would like to work with, other banks, right? Small banks right now, perhaps they're going to start seeing you know, foreclosures, I, I really do honestly hope not, but thinking about those partnerships, also thinking about, um, you know, other folks that you've done business with or past clients or other friends or family. I mean, these are the pieces that we're really gonna wanna think about. And this is something I feel like JT has hammered really hard because it's super important to think about these things right now because there's going to be folks after out there, you know, after whatever it is that happens that are going to need our help, no matter what kind of business you're in, small businesses right now, obviously are really, really struggling. Restaurant industries, service industries, the hair salons. My sister-in-law is, you know, works in a hair salon and I mean, she shut down. And I, I really think about that every single day because there's really, it's really hard to, you know, maybe not perhaps come back from that, but you know, what do we do? When are things going to open up again? And so thinking about those things and really trying to put yourself out there to help in whatever way that we can and then thinking about the folks on the back end that are going to need our services is extremely important. So from 5.30 to 6, so that's what I do typically from about 5 to 5.30. Then from about 5.30 to 6.30, I do what's called mind feeding. And this is something that JT also taught me, is feeding your mind, right? Whether you're learning something new, learning a new marketing strategy, um, doing some online coaching, right? Um, any kind of a book that you can read, 
right? That's related to business or even family, whatever it is, feeding your mind somehow to enable you to be able to help when we come out of this, right? Because there is a when. Um, 6.30 to 7 a.m. I'm working on revamping my marketing that we have. The majority of the folks that we help are folks that inherit homes through probate. I've done a lot of work with some local attorneys um, in the Twin Cities area and provided that help and purchased homes from folks who are not looking to keep them after they've inherited it after probate. We also help folks out of foreclosure, um, you know, whether it's stopping their sale for them so they have time to, um, you know, get the money together and collect and then, you know, re, uh, reinstate the loan. Or if they have to sell, we end up helping them with the short sale so that they avoid foreclosure. I've talked about that in some of our videos, but really kind of saying, hey, we're here for help, you know, your help. There's a mortgage forbearance explaining what all of those things in. We've provided a lot of content. And that's what I plan to keep doing because those are that is what people need right now is they need a lot of content and they need help and direction and what they need to be doing. You know what the forbearance means, all of those types of things. So I, I think really strategically planning that and thinking about what it is that your market is that you help that they're going to need on the backside of this is extremely important. So we've been changing some of our language. We obviously put you know, COVID-19 marketing and that language in there because it really does change things. And so you have to be on the pulse of what's happening with your community and make sure that you are putting out a message there that you are there to help and what you can provide if people need your help on the backside. Um, then, I mean, to be honest, from seven o'clock in the morning until nine o'clock in the morning, I'm with my kids. That's typically when they wake up, they're four and six years old. They need our complete attention a lot of the times. Um, and so that's the time that I blocked myself off to be with my kids. And so I then have my husband, Dan, he's with, uh, he's then working as well. He gets up about five, five thirty as well. He does his work from seven to 9 AM. He continues to do his work. I take the kids, you know, I get them ready for school or that they have right now. We feed, you know, them breakfast, brush their teeth, make their bed and get them ready to go. So those two hours, I time block for that. Then from nine um, until 11, Dan has the kids. So then from nine to 10, I have a daily webinar that I watch every day um, with JT, who's doing free webinars right now, where it's focusing you know, on real estate investing, managing your business, social media, a whole bunch of different things. Again, some mind feeding. Um, I, you know, and I also kind of do some stuff on the side. I'm a multitasker, so sometimes you know, I'll be looking at some, some marketing, different things like that, but really focusing on what that webinar provides. That's something that's extremely important to me to again, mind feed. Then from 10 to 11, based upon that morning time that I did with my strategic thinking and partnerships and different things like that, I'm making calls for that whole hour. I'm calling people that I've worked with in the past. I've called people that I hope to work with in the future, right? I'm thinking about who's going to need strategic partnerships. I'm emailing people. I'm calling, these are, this is my time for new partnerships. And so, and, and, you know, to maintain the other partnerships that I have, I've reached out to the attorneys that I've worked with before to see what we can do to help their business. Because frankly, I mean, in the, you know, the other day when I was doing the, um, the, um, the, the online um, live that I did, excuse me, with the attorneys, right, my state planning attorneys, they're still working, but I've also had, you know, some other folks that are like, hey, our probates are kind of stopped right now because the courts are shut down. And so there's still people out there again saying, hey, we're still here. We're able to help you. We still have funding. Let us know if there's anything that we can do to help. Not pressuring, but just saying, hey, we're here. We're able to help if we if you need it. Right. So that's what I do from 10 to 11. Then from 11 to 1, I am with my kids again. Right. I'm typically the person that makes, you know, preps meals in our house. Dan does it sometimes, too. But I've sort of taken over the meal times. And then 11 to 1, Dan is doing work. So I, you know, some of them finishing up some schoolwork, we're doing lunch, we go outside. Today we were riding bikes for a while after lunch. And so I take that time with my kids, right? And I'm focused on them 100% because that was something I also found myself doing was I was on my phone or I was checking emails or doing things like that. And it's not fair to them either. And so again, that time blocking is super important um, to have so that you're just focused on the task at hand, right? So then one to three, Dan is again with the kids. I'm back now to mind feeding. I'm either doing my Facebook lives 
or since you know real estate has been deemed an essential um, business, I'm still going out in appointments and meeting with people. So during that time is one of my good times that I'm able to go out and meet folks on appointments if I need to. And then I look at all of my marketing campaigns based upon the numbers that I looked at in the morning. Is this campaign still worth it? Are we getting any reflections? Are we, um, you know, how are we we getting our leads? Are they coming from phone calls? Are they coming from mailers? Are they coming from emails? Are they coming from Facebook? What are they coming from? So I'm really kind of dissecting that piece of it and then seeing, hey, is that making sense, right? Do I keep doing this? Do I tweak it a little bit? So that's my time that I set aside for that. Then from three to four, all of us are together. Our family is together. We go outside, we do some kind of family activity. We have puzzles. You know, there's games depending on the weather, but that's an hour for us to spend together as a family. Then from four to five, I am back working. This is my time where I'm making follow-up calls to all of my customers. If we have folks that we have a pending purchase agreement with, I'm calling them about that. If there's past clients, new clients, these are the time for me to reach out and make a lot of my phone calls to folks to let them know that we're here, that we can help in whatever way that we can. So I focus that time on that. Five to 6.30, is our dinner prep and dinner time. Now, whether that's myself or Dan, it all just kind of depends on who's making dinner, but that's again, some more family time. And then for us, like I said, to have our meal together, then from 6.30 to 7.30, that's our family time. 7.30 to eight is you know bedtime. And then what Dan and I have been trying to do, um, which is another part, the third easy step, right? So you've got strategic planning, You've got block scheduling. And then the third one is personal time, whether that is you working out, um, you know, you taking time alone or some kind of activity, whether you're or you're with your spouse or your partner or whatever it is. That's really time that Dan and I have that we set aside eight to eight thirty. We're either doing, you know, yoga. I'm doing yoga or he's working out. We're setting those things in place. And sometimes, you know, folks like to work out in the morning. It just all depends on what works best for you. But what I have found is that doing that working out at that time for me works works best. And so that's what we've focused on is doing that time. And then 8.30 to either 9.30 or 10 at night, it's time for Dan and I to be together and just focus on our marriage. And so that's what we've really, really, you know, that's what we've really done. Um, you know, when it comes to the real estate side, I also have a real estate coach, Rachel, whom I am actually going to be um, speaking with. Um, I'm super excited about this on Thursday um, at two o'clock. And she's going to be talking with me about building a business, um, running a business that doesn't run you, right? And so that's something also that's really important during this time because it is so frantic. And I think, like I said, it happened overnight that we have to create some kind of certainty in our own lives. And Rachel has been really good with me and helping on that because she also started waking up at five in the morning. And I know that's not her favorite thing to do either, but in order for her to be able to focus on her family as well and be present, she took that time in the morning too. And so, you know, all of this coaching that I've received from my coaches has been extremely important for me and, you know, has been, you know, really important for me, um, not only for me, but for, for my family and, you know, JT CEO Francie, she's also helped a lot with, you know, part of the marketing too and repositioning and, you know, what did it, what can we do to help folks? And so you have to really, and something I heard on one of the, you know, the webinars this morning that JT said, um, you know, and also that Rachel has said is we have to focus on the end result, right? And then reverse engineer whatever that end result is that we want. So, you know, I need to make X amount of money or I want to spend X amount of time with my family. Whatever it is that you want to do, set that goal first and then work backwards and then determine what it is that's going to get you there and make sure that it makes sense. Of course, you're going to make improvements and different, th you know, different things will come up along the way. Is this schedule perfect every day? Of course not. You know, things are going to happen. Like my my six year old today took it upon himself to go really fast down the road and turn and he totally completely bit it, right? And fell and I was like, okay, that was you know another half an hour that kind of took away from some work, but he needed the comfort. And so it's not going to be perfect. It's not, we don't expect it to be perfect, but at least have something set up to set yourself up for success for the day. I go in every day knowing exactly what I'm going to do that day and focus on. Right. And so each day of that morning of that morning strategic planning and thinking 
you know, I review, I have one day that I set aside for reviewing, um, you know, our systems, right? This is the time because all everybody is at home. This is the time for us to put together, are all of my systems working appropriately in my business? Do I have anything here that I can cut? Is everything making sense that I am paying for? If not, get rid of it or tweak it somehow. Because now, like I said, this is the time we're at home. Some people have more time, some people have less, but all of the time is the same, right? So saying that there isn't enough time to do things, in my mind, I see as just being an excuse. You have to make the time and set that priority there for yourself and make sure that you get it done. Another thing we look at is, you know, our marketing, revamping marketing, right? That's something that I talked about. Now there's, you know, there's a pandemic that's happening. We're not trying to sell things to folks. We're trying to provide content, let folks know that we're here to help them if they need the help, right? That's why I've been so proactive of putting some of this information out there is because a lot of people don't necessarily know how these things work. How does the mortgage forbearance work? You know, am I going to have to pay everything all at once? And that it, and that could happen. I mean, we've had some folks saying, yeah, I called my bank and they said to me, I'm going to have to pay everything, you know, as soon as this forbearance is up. And I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. And it's like, OK, let's let's figure out a plan so that we can keep you out of you know foreclosure, whatever it is. Right. Str strategic thinking. I like to look at myself as a real estate strategist because this is the point, right, that we're at, that we have to strategize our way out of the mess that we're in. And so that part, I think, is really, really important. The other thing to touch upon is, you know, those strategic relationships. That's also something that I plan on, whether it's in your business or in your life with your partner. I mean, a lot of people have said this, is that there's either going to be a lot of new babies at the end of this, or there's going to be a lot of divorces, right? And, you know, Dan and I work really hard on our marriage every day and it's extremely important to us so we make sure that we set time aside for us to be together as a couple and only focus on our marriage versus our business since we do live and work together it's really important to set that time aside just for your partner if you have one and make sure that your partnership is strong through this because this is a lot of time that we're spending together and so um you know i've had to learn to adjust to that too and so and so has dan and so have our children and so it's always an adjustment and improvement that we can make every day. And as long as you keep those lines of communication open, that's one thing that I think is extremely important. Keeping those lines open, having honest conversation. Um, that's been something that's really important for us and that we focus on as well. Um, and then, you know, again, like I said, maintaining those old relationships, or excuse me, maintaining those old relationships and then also looking for new relationships. And so, you know, a lot of folks are at home right now. They're probably going to be answering their phones a little bit more. And you just have to know. Uh, or let them know that you are thinking about them, you are thinking about their needs and hoping that you're able to help if needed when the time comes. And so these are the things that I've, you know, kind of reflected on over the last few, you know, weeks that we've been at home and have really had to make that adjustment. And I feel like the block timing itself has really, really helped. The strategic planning and thinking every day has helped. And then also making sure that I am in the right mindset. Mindset is also a huge part in this, right? There's a lot of folks that are extremely fearful. And then there's a lot of folks that think, you know, this isn't a big deal. You know, I, I, I don't know. I, for me personally, yes, like it is a big deal. We do have to follow the regulations. We need to, you know, bend the cur or flatten the curve, right? Um, you know, I know it's really hard for folks to stay at home. I, I'm right there in the same boat with you, but this is something just as, as a collective culture that we all need to think about. And so taking that time, right, and planning your day and still having it be um, productive, I think is extremely important and making sure that mindset is there. We're going to come out of this and we need to be ready to come out of it when the, when the time comes. And not only, you know, are these three um, steps essential for now, this is essential for afterwards. We should still be keeping block timing, right? This is something we should be able to focus on and, and put into our business and put into our life if we can. It's also, you know, strategic thinking about your business and about, um, you know, your family and those things are really important. And then also that stress management, right? Everybody should be moving their bodies every day if you can, if you're able and able-bodied and you can do that. Make that a priority, right? I went running on Sunday and I haven't run in oh my gosh, a really long time and my body hurts, but it's a good hurt. And I'm glad that I did it because we need to get outside. We need to move our bodies. And you know what? People are being a lot nicer out there and everybody's saying hello and waving and it's actually been quite lovely. And so I just wanted to send that message to you folks today that 
Um, you know, as daunting as some of these days may seem, I wake up excited every day and look forward to the day, right? Not only with my kids, but for the work that we're able to do in our business and providing the help and the, you know, the support and strategic planning and, you know, finding a way out for folks. If, if there isn't a way out, especially when it, you know, comes to homes and if they are in trouble or, you know, are looking for, for help, I mean, we are here. And that's why we keep posting things on our website. Um, which again is www.propertyhousepartners.com. House is spelled H-A-U-S. We have a blog on there of, you know, all the up-to-date housing information that's happening, not only in our state, but also nationally. Um, you know, we talked about the iBuyer back out the other day of those folks, you know, from the online buyers. Um, there's $163 million worth of real estate that folks are, you know, those folks are backing out on. And that's a lot of people that are left in, in the dust. Um, and, you know, we're trying to let folks know that we're here if they need the help. Um, the other thing is that, you know, I want folks to know that um, we also have a video library on there as well for all of the lives that I've done. There's that information is posted there if you weren't able to see it live or see it in my feed. Um, and just know that we're here to help in whatever way, you know, that we can. Um, I, I do hope, like I said, I know we're going to come out of this. I know these next few weeks from what I've heard are gonna be some of the toughest weeks, you know, that we've been through with COVID. But I do hope that all of you can try and shift your mindset some and know that we're going to get through this and know that there is a way and be excited about each day that you have and know that your business, you know, can thrive. Um, like I said, and try and be creative and adjust to that new normal, whatever it is. Um, and yeah, hopefully let folks know that we're here and that, um, you know, if anybody does have any issues with real estate and needs help, we're here to help you and strategize and do whatever we can. Um, so that's it for me today. What I would love for you guys to think about is Thursday, like I said, I'm going to have my coach, Rachel Schneider from REI Blueprint. She's going to be joining me at two o'clock central standard time and talking about running a business that doesn't run you even during COVID-19, you know, and after. So join us on Thursday at two o'clock. Also take a look at our website um, again, www.propertyhousepartners.com for some um, information on everything that's going on with the housing market. And then also um, our video uh, library that we'll talk, you know, that goes over all of these videos that we've done. Thanks, guys, and I look forward to seeing you all on Thursday. Take care. Be excited about your week.